Hi, I'm Kevin Hill, and today I'm going to give you my thoughts on detailing out a foreground of the painting. It's one of those things that we do last, but it's one of the first things that people see, and I think this might be something worth kind of expanding on. All right, let's get started. So I went ahead and put up a painting. I just grabbed one that was a winter scene because I thought it'd be good to show you some winter first. We'll do summer later. Now this painting is, well, it's a little bit tacky, but mostly dry. <laughs> so this is, this lesson's more meant to kind of show you what you can do, you know, like two, three, four weeks after you're done painting it. Uh, you come back, you say, oh, I wish I would have done this or that to the foreground. Well, let me show you kind of how you can make it a little more detailed. So I'm going to take some white. There, some white, and I've got my clear gel. I never put clear gel in the foreground at all, really. This is totally different because I don't paint while it's dry. Well, I mean, every once in a while we'll do something like a two-part, but generally not. Generally we try to just get it all done while it's wet. So this is a little different, but if you've ever seen one of our two-part paintings, that would have been dry. But here we go. I've got my detail round brush. If you, if you don't have the detail round brush, that's the first step. <laughs> Go get the detail round brush because it is something that will really help you unlock a lot of this, a lot of this detail. I love the way that it works. I'm just touching kind of right along to get what feels like little uh, seed pods here in the grass. And do you see how that's starting to develop just a little more interest in the foreground? It's just a blue and white, but colors don't matter really. There. Okay, just dabbing. Now, what I'm doing as I do this, I'm looking around at the at the shapes. See this big shape? I'm, I'm thinking of it like a tree or something like that. I'm not just going around and dot, dot, dot everywhere. That would be terrible. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying very hard to make this, make this work. Okay, that looks pretty decent, doesn't it? Yeah, that looks pretty decent. So that's a detail. Now, another detail that you can do, right on the bottom of some of these grass blades, what I'll do is I'll try to get a color that's similar. Like I said, the colors, that's not color mix video today. Okay, there's a color that's sort of similar. At the bottom of your blades of grass, what you can do is you can take them like this and just pull them. Ooh, a little clear gel, because remember this is dry. It's so weird to paint dry with oils. It feels like an acrylic painting, really. But now this is all stuff you could do while it's wet. It would be just as, as good, if not better. Usually better when you do it wet. But I don't have any wet paintings to show you. There. Cool. Yeah, that looks, see that? Just give it a little, it looks like it's coming up. Give it a little pull, coming up the grass blades. And that is a little detail, a foreground detail that can really help your paintings. Using that same lighter tone, I might just Put a little touch in the seed pods here. Okay, now the liner brush is something that people struggle with. So I'd like to, like to show you how to use it because it is not something you should struggle with. Once you get good at it, it's a wonderful brush. I've got a little cup of oil right here and I'll be dipping into that. And I'm gonna go right into our white. There. And now start, here's the way I use this brush, kind of Tilt it like this so that the tip is facing down toward the floor. Do a few motions above the canvas while you're still moving. Come in and touch down like this. And you can just pull out these little blades of grass. See that? Never come in, start, and then try to pull it out. Oop, I got a blob. I know you guys get those too. I've seen them. <laughs> yes, so we'll try to avoid the blobs. But anyway, that's how you use the liner brush. Hopefully that helps. So you can add that extra detail. Now, if you come up here, I'll show you how to add little, little bits of sticks and stuff up here. Just come up, starting at the bottom, and wiggle your hand as you, as you go outward. Now, here's what I'm doing. I want to bring these sticks so that they help lead your eye into the foreground, into the painting, rather. There. The painting is dry, but this sort of thing is, is almost completely identical wet or dry. There, and if you're an acrylic painter, <laughs> this is exactly what you would be doing. No different. But you see how you can use a bush as a little bit of a, as a catch to keep your eye from flying off the edge? Watch this, see that? Kind of bring in these old frosty limbs. 
either dead or dormant. It doesn't really make any difference to the painting. But there, crazy, huh? Simple, but, but I like that. See how that's really adding an extra bit of detail that, that we were just didn't have before. It wasn't really incomplete. I'm just kind of just showing you how to do it, you know? And if you've got a painting, it could even be framed. You could take it off the wall and say, I want to go do that to this painting. And then if you don't like it because it's dry, what you can do is you can take a paper towel soaked in just a little bit of something like baby oil and lightly, lightly rub it to get that off. There. So we got some sort of a dead thing going on. I like the way that that adds a lot of, just in, just in talking to you, look at all of that detail, a lot of interest. Wow. Now I've got a filbert brush loaded with some slightly thinned white and I've got a palette knife. All right. And with the palette knife in the left hand, because I'm right handed, I'm going to flick some snow on. This is something we almost never do, but this is a detail that you can add that I think just makes a big difference to certain paintings. Now I'll show you how to deal with this because this is going to happen to you. These little blobbies, they're going to happen to you. So I'll show you how to deal with them. Just ignore them for now. <laughs> That's how you deal with them. Just ignore them. Now I'll show you. But anyway, now this, remember this painting, I keep saying it because it's just different for me. The painting is dry. This would be much easier when it's wet because all you would have to do is just touch the blobbies and they would disappear. But see, I'm just flicking on a little snow. I push, I leave the, the knife stationary and I push the brush toward the canvas. Only one direction. If you go the other way, you're going to get a face full of uh, thin down oil paint. I use oil to thin it down there. I'm just going right over the whole, the whole painting. It's, as it starts to run out, you may need to add a little more oil and paint to your brush. The more oily it is, sometimes the better it works to a certain point. But there you go. Now the whole painting is covered in snow. Definitely do this somewhere where you don't care if you overspray because that will happen. Cool. The only other thing I'm gonna do is maybe get some slightly thinner yet droplets and see if I can get just some bigger snowflakes in the middle. Cool. That's snowy enough for my taste. You can go as far as you want. Now to deal with those little issues, I'll just take a shop towel, just the corner of a shop towel and I just touch them and blur them in. If this was wet, oh, this would be so much easier. I'm just going to make them look like snow. Okay. And then just go over those places one more time to complete the look. Get my palette knife back out. A little more paint. There, see so you have to go back over them because you kind of have a texture there that's flatter than it should be. And that's it. Hopefully that's interesting. I like the way that looks. We never do that, but it's kind of fun since we got a stormy sky. Now here's our next painting. This is a nice kind of springtime look or summer, whatever, and it's completely dry. This is oil paint. And anyway, I did it really quick. I didn't even film it. This was just something I did a couple weeks ago. Anyway, it is perfect to show you how to bring out the detail in the road using the same flicking maneuver that we had before. So I'm going to take just some of our white and some of our yellows, red, doesn't really matter. I'm going to build up a lot of color. I'm just going to stash my palette, hopefully where I can get to it pretty easily because we've got a lot to do. Let's take our palette knife in the left hand and here's what we're going to do right here toward the foreground only. You don't want to do it in the background, but toward the foreground, I'm going to splatter very controlled. So I'm going smaller. See, I'm going closer to the painting. I just want to land right in this area. Again, if this was wet, this would be easier, but I don't have any wet paintings right now. So I will just this way, I'll show you how to do it. You can do it on your wet painting. It'd be better. There. Oh, I like that. See that now it's starting to get us a little bit of rock texture in there. Okay. The next thing I'll do is I'll darken that with more umber and more oil. And I'll spray a couple of umber ones on there. Oops. So if it didn't come off like that, then add some more oil. The oil will help it fling right off and onto the, the painting. I know it's very subtle. 
Here's some black. Oh, I see those black. Let's do some black ones. Even more black. More oil, more black. <laughs> My palette's kind of on a shelf down here. Oh yeah, look at that. Now if you get too many, you can always go back and take them off, but I'm just going to spray some of these up in here. It looks like little seed pods in the grass. I'm going to do that over here and in the middle of the road. More paint. Oh, I like this. I hope you, I hope you can see it. You may just need to trust me <laughs> and then try it at home, you know, if, it, if it's not showing up. Cool. And then a little over here. See how that makes a little bit of a seed pod look instead of dabbling it like we did before. So this kind of splattering technique is a really good foreground trick that not that many people use that I know of. Like, I mean, they use it, but not as much as they should. Me too, right? I don't know why we don't get this little trick out more often, but I don't know. Maybe we're tired at the end of the painting. I know I am. That's okay. Take some yellow now and I'm going to sprinkle that yellow. Oops, that didn't come off. So let me show you what my palette's doing. Here's my palette. That was the yellow, but I didn't like it. So I'm going to just try to get a little bit more of a pure yellow color going. There, that's better. Let's see what that does for us. Wipe my palette knife off as well. Oh, that's <laughs> thin. Get some of that out. There we go. Oh, that's pretty. Look at how we are developing the light on the road. Nice. And some of that up in here would not be a bad thing. A little bit over here. Good. A couple of splatters there. You can take this as far as you want. This is really good for sand on, you know, on the sea. Yeah, that's hard to say. You know what I mean? It's good for that. <laughs> oh boy. Okay, gotta have fun. Okay, cool. So anyway, I'm just picking up some yellow ochre now and doing the same thing. So that's probably enough, but you see how that's so much sharper, so much more heavily detailed. Now what I would do at this point, if this was a regular painting, I believe I'd take my liner brush and I think I'd take some dark. Let's find us a dark color. You know, I forgot to put any sap green out. Oops, I'll just make up a green of some kind. It won't be the same. I love sap green. It's not the same, but it'll be fine for the lesson. So I got a nice dark green going. And what I'll do is I'll place these right over to create just a little more flow, a little more, you know, get rid of some of those dots where they shouldn't be. The whole grass area will flow better that way. Oh yeah. It'll kind of overgrow the path a little. Nice. But the grass, I think the liner brush and the detail round, and then this kind of flicking with the filbert brush with thin paint. I think those are your, your kind of your little tricks for creating a more detailed foreground without any extra effort, I would say really is not any extra effort. And no matter how wet and slippery your, your foreground is, you know, today mine is dry, but yours won't be. And most likely, and this is going to work out just as good, if not better, because you're just flicking it on. So that's, that's a good point. Make sure that you try this. This is really cool. All right. Well, that really helps to give you an idea how to define your foreground area using a simple trick anybody can do. But look, it just makes it so much sharper and so much more detailed. Well, I had a lot of fun showing you these quick little tips and tricks, and hopefully they help you detail out your foreground, make it just a little bit sharper and make your overall painting just a little bit nicer. Don't forget to check out our website, DVDs and Brushline. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.